All right, guys, this is the video for Keeping It Fresh, Chapter 11. This will be the first part. Uh, this will be the beginning of the Keeping It Fresh, and then the second part will have the second part of the Keeping It Fresh. Um, chapter 1, the first question there, you have 2 to the 3rd power plus the quantity 8 minus 4 divided by 4. So think about order of operations. That's too big. So if you think about, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, Purple elephants may destroy a school or just PEMDAS. Uh, the first thing we want to do here would be parentheses. So that's the 8 minus 4. So I'm still going to have 2 to the 3rd plus 8 minus 4 is 4 divided by 4. Think about your pizza slice work. It should be getting smaller and smaller as you go here. Next thing we want to do is the exponents. I'm just going to write over this next problem here for my work. Uh, 2 to the 3rd power, remember, means 2 times 2 times 2. It doesn't mean 2 times 3. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, plus 4 divided by 4. Next, I'd want to do division. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, and then I can add 8 plus 1 is 9. So that would be my correct answer for the first one. Uh, number 2 says an online store sells an average of 236 hats per month. How many hats does the store sell during a year? So look at your units here. That's important. 236 Per month, but how much are they going to sell in a year? Well, you have to know that there are 12 months in a year. So if it's 236 every month, that's 236, 236, 236 for 12 times. So that means you want to do 236 times 12. So if you do that, you should get, whoa, you should get 2,000. 832 hats. Uh, number three says you buy one sweater, three t-shirts, and two pairs of jeans online. What's your total cost? So I think the easiest way to do this would be next to the items here. I know that if I buy multiples of them, I need to multiply by that number. So sweater, I'm just buying one. So times one means it's going to cost me $17 for that one sweater. I'm buying three t-shirts, so I want to do 14 times three which is 42, and I'm buying two pairs of jeans, so I'm going to do 32 times 2. You might have to do that work off to the side to figure that one out. That's 64. And then I want to add all those numbers together. So that should give me $123 in total that I'm spending. Number four says commemorative coins come in packs of 15, while coin holders come in packs of 25. What's the least number of packs you should buy in order to have the same number of coins and coin holders? So what we want to do here, least is our keyword. We're looking for the least common multiple of 15 and 25. Now what's real tricky about the wording of this problem is packs. So I don't know about Mr. Mo, but I'm going to give credit for two different answers here because I know the wording might be a little confusing on this one. So what we want to do is take our numbers, 15, and 25 and find the LCM, the least common multiple. There's a few ways that Mr. Mo and I taught you to do that in class. Um, I know most of my students prefer doing the cake method. So we're going to take 15 and 25 and draw our first layer of cake there. I want to think of a number that I could divide into both. So I could divide 5 into both 15 and 25. So 5 goes into 15 three times. 5 goes into 25 five times. I want to check to see is there another number that divides into both. There's not. So I know I'm done. Now remember, GCF and LCM, if I was finding GCF or greatest common factor, it would be all my numbers on the side of my cake multiplied together if I have more than one. LCM is the numbers on the side and the numbers on the bottom all multiplied together. So think about drawing like a big L. So I want to do 5 times 3 times 5. Remember, you can multiply those in any order you want. So I'm going to do, okay, well, 5 times 5 would be 25, and then times 3 would be 75. So I'm going to go ahead and accept 75 as an answer if that's what you guys had come up with. But really what they were asking about was how many packs we would need of each. So you'd have to go, okay, well that would be 75 coins would go in to the coin holders, right? But so then that means if commemorative coins come in packs of 15, 75 divided by 15 would be that I would want to get five packs of coins. And I need to hold 75 coins, and those holders come in packs of 25. So I need 
three tax of the holders. So that's really what this problem was looking for, but I know that's a bit tricky. So I'll personally accept either answer, either 75 or the fact that that would equate out to five packs of coins and three packs of holders. All right, let's look at the next problems. Chapter two, fractions. So on number five, you want to multiply two and four nines times three and a half. Uh, you should change both of those mixed numbers into improper fractions first. So remember that means take the whole number, multiply by the denominator, and add the numerator. So two times nine is 18, plus four is 22. That's your new numerator. Denominator stays the same. Same thing here, so 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Uh, remember, you can cross-reduce when it comes to multiplying, and that can make your life a lot easier at the end there. So 7 and 9, there's no number that divides into both of those, but I can divide 2 and 22 by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, 22 divided by 2 is 11. Then I multiply straight across, so 11 times 7 is 77, 9 times 1 is 9. Uh, my students, I tell them that that's still simplified, so you can leave your number as uh, an improper fraction, although if you wanted to make it a mixed number and you were curious, is my answer correct? As a mixed number, that would be 8 and 5 ninths. Either answer is okay. Uh, number 6 is division. So we have 3 and 4 ninths divided by 4 and 1 third. Still, just like you start a multiplication problem, you want to change those mixed numbers into improper fractions first. So 3 times 9 is 27, plus 4 would be 31. Keep it division for now, okay? It can be confusing if you try to do more than one thing in a step of work. So let's make this step just about changing to improper fractions. So 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1 is 13. Now I can go ahead and change this, because remember we don't actually divide fractions. Our class called it skip time split, which means skip the first number, so leave it as 31 over 9. Times means change this to times. And flip means make this number as reciprocal. Flip it around. Now again, you can check for cross-reducing because now it's just a multiplying problem. So I'm going to look and see, all right, 31 and 13, I'm pretty sure there's no number that divides into both of those. But 3 and 9, I can divide those both by 3. So then 31 times 1 is 31. 3 times 13 is 39. And that is in simplest form, so that would be your answer. All right, let's to your next page. Number seven says, how much will a bag of chips and a drink cost you when you have a coupon for 75 cents off the total price? So this is a two-part problem. First, you need to figure out the chips and the drink together. What's that going to cost you? Well, that would be adding. So look over here at your table. Chips are $1.29. A drink's 89 cents. Remember, the key with decimals is to line up the decimals when you're adding. So 9 plus 9 will give you 18. Carry the 1. Carry the 1. Bring the decimal down to the same spot that you lined it up in in your original problem. So it's going to cost me 218 before I use my coupon. 75 cents off means I should subtract 75 cents from $2.18. So 75 cents would be like 0.75. Remember again to line up those decimals. So when we subtract, 8 minus 5 is 3. I can't take 7 away from 1, so I'm going to borrow. 11 minus 7 is 4. Bring down the decimal. So it's going to cost me $1.43 for those items. Eight is kind of a combination of Chapter 2 and Chapter 4, because uh, you're dealing with area of a 2D shape, and you're also working with decimals. So it says find the area of the rectangle. So first of all, you need to remember that the way you find the area of a rectangle is base times height or length times width. So if we look, we have a base and a height of 8 tenths and 1 and 25 hundredths. Remember, what you can do for multiplying is you can multiply the numbers as if the decimals weren't there, and then you just need to put that decimal in the proper spot in your answer when you're done. So I'm going to treat 1 in 25 hundredths like it's just 125. When I multiply, I like to start with whatever number's longer, so that number's longer. Uh, and then the 8 tenths, I don't need the 0, so I can just treat it like it's 8. That makes the multiplying a lot easier to do. So 5 times 8 is 40, carry the 4. 2 times 8 is 16, plus the 4 would make it 20. 1 times 8 is 8, plus 2 is 10. Now, where does that decimal go? This is what sometimes students forget. So, look, you've got 1, 2, 3 numbers that were behind the decimal in your answer. Right now, the decimal would be here. So, 1, 2, 3 numbers need to be behind the decimal in my answer here as well. So, that 1,000 really ends up being 1 when the decimal's in the right spot. Uh, I don't think there were units on the problem. No, there weren't. So, we're just going to say 1, 
units squared. And that's where we're going to stop because Tyler Coons wants to come in and learn. You'll see the rest of it in the second part of the video.